Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome again to the new lecture of the course fundamentals and applications of dielectric ceramics. So let us just briefly recap what we were doing in the last class. So let me just go to the next page. So in the last class we were looking at phase transitions in ferroelectrics. So we started our discussion with second order phase transition. Where we found that you know in the free energy expression you have three constants A, B, C and B and C being positive, but A changing its sign across T C. So of course these free energy plots can be plotted by choosing appropriate values of A, B, C. So when we plot them what we find is that when you plot free energy as a function of polarization for A being, uh, so A could be changing its sign from positive to negative. So basically what happens is that in the first case your A is positive when it is, so when the temperature is so this A is greater than 0 at T greater than a transition temperature called as Tc and when A is negative there is a there are two maxima so this is at T less than Tc when A is negative and then in between of course since A changes its sign which means as a function of temperature it must be 0 somewhere and it turns out it is 0 at T is equal to T C when A is equal to 0. So, this is a second order phase transition and when you plot polarization as a function of temperature because you know the parameters are the function of temperature as well. So, when you plot polarization as a function of temperature it shows a gradual change up to a temperature T C. So, this is polarization and when you plot susceptibility, susceptibility shows a behavior like this at T C, this is, this is 1 over chi. It has different slopes on the two sides of the transition, but there is a sort of, there is no abrupt change in polarization or in susceptibility at transition temperature and this is also manifested as we will see in the, in the entropy. Uh, the entropy also does not change uh, uh, in the second order, there is no uh, abrupt change in the first derivative of free energy that is entropy, but the second derivative changes abruptly. So, this is basically second order transition and then we also looked at what is first order phase transition. In the first order phase transition what we saw was that now we took B less than 0, C greater than 0 and sign of A changes okay. and there we see that there is a range of temperature between which uh, the free energy curve remains sort of uh, unconventional. So when you plot now free energy as a function of pressure uh, polarization, so G as a function of as a polarization, so at high temperatures let us say at high temperatures the polarization plot G, so this is at T greater than a certain temperature T C and it shows one minima okay, which is the uh, unpolarized state and then when you go to, so this uh, that is when A is greater than 0. Now when you plot at lower temperature, so there is this is let us say T is equal to T 0, but it is less than T C. So at this temperature A is negative and it is less than and at T is equal to T0 which is lower than Tc. At Tc what happens is that 
at TC we have a situation in which we have so this is let us say at T is equal to TC when A is equal to 0 and this is the situation when we have 3 minima. So, you can see there are 2 minima corresponding to the polar phase and 1 minima corresponding to the non-polar phase. So, this suggests that we have you know one uh, non-polar phase in coexistence with the polar phase between the temperature T c and uh, T naught and it is only at T naught the material stabilizes into a perfectly. Uh, so, this is a polar state and this is manifested in polarization in a different way. So, when you plot polarization as a function of T in this case what we see is that the polarization decreases and then it goes abruptly equal to 0 at T c. Okay. But the susceptibility shows a different kind of behavior. So, now when you plot susceptibility, so this is uh, polarization, let us say the red one is polarization and the green one if I plot as susceptibility, susceptibility shows a discontinuity at temperature T c. And if you plot this extrapolation of this, this is the temperature T naught. So, this is the range T c uh, T naught minus T, T c minus T naught within which you have coexistence of these two phases. On the in contrast if you look for paramag uh, if you look for second order in that case you can say T c is equal to T naught right. But in this case you have T naught and T c which are different temperature T naught being lower than the T c. Now what is this manifested in? This is manifested in a discontinuity in susceptibility at T c and sudden drop of polarization at uh, at T c. So, polarization has a finite value at this point and suddenly it drops to 0. So, which means there is a discontinuity right. So, this is called as first order phase transition. This is also manifested in uh, as we will see discontinuity in the in the first derivative that is del, del g by del t and which is nothing but minus of del g by del t is entropy. So, so, in the secondary second order phase transition it is the second derivative that is discontinuous whereas, in first, first, first order phase transition the first derivative is discontinuous that is the fundamental difference between the two. So, we did some analysis of second order phase transition and we looked at the susceptibility parameters. Now, let us look at the first order phase transition again in little bit more detail. So, we get back to first order phase transition. So, for the first order phase transition we first see the change in entropy. The change in entropy is nothing but S minus S naught. This is equal to minus of half P square d A over d T if you ignore the higher order terms uh, sorry not small t, but it should be capital T. Now, since polarization is discontinuous at, so we know that polarization is shows a discontinuity at if polarization shows a discontinuity at so this is minus of p square then obviously entropy will also show discontinuity at so basically we will have entropy also showing discontinuity at tc and this is what is basically first order transition in the second order what happened was if you recall second order in second order the entropy will the term will be the same minus of half p square d a by d t. But there d p is continuous which means s is continuous. Now, when you take the derivative of this you take del s by del t which is so c v will be equal to del s by del t which is which is minus of half del 2 g by del t 2 del del t 2 now p square actually becomes discontinuous. So, p square is discontinuous slope of p square. So, slope of p square is discontinuous at T c which means your C v is discontinuous. So, you see a so, basically in this since there is a change in entropy there is a there is a discontinuity in entropy which means 
you have latent heat of transformation. There is since entropy is continuous, there is no latent heat involved. So, in some sense you can say the first order transition is more of a destructive transform of transformational uh, where a lot of rearrangement takes place just like liquid solid kind of transformation. Whereas, in second order the transformation is more gradual as a result the free energy curve will also show some sort of continuity in two phase regions and the slopes being equal in the both regions as a result there are no uh, discontinuities and entropy of the free energy. There are no sudden changes in the free energy as a result there is no sudden kink in the or, or discontinuity in the entropy. So, this is what it is in terms of phase transition if you look at first transform first order in little bit more detail if you want to work out the, um, the, the susceptibility parts in both regions then we know that first, first condition is that at equilibrium we can take E to be equal to 0 and we know that del G by del P at T is equal to E this is equal to 0. So, if you so if P is not equal to 0 in that case you can write this expression as A plus B P square plus C P 4 to be equal to 0. There is the first equation that you will get. Secondly at T is equal to T C at T is equal to T C G T C will be equal to G naught T C and this will be equal to 0 as well though the free energies of phases should be equal. So, as a result we will have G uh, we can write the G expression as half of A P square at T C plus 1 by 4 B P, P to the power 4 plus 1 by 6 C P to the power 6 and so on and so forth this being equal to 0. So, this will become basically half of A P square plus 1 by 4 B P 4 plus 1 by 6 C P. If you ignore the higher order terms using these two equations you can determine the polarization as um, minus of polarization square will be minus of 3 by 4 B divided by C and A will be nothing but 3 divided by 16 B square divided by C. So, basically you will have polarization as plus minus square root of 3 by 4 B divided by C. So, since we know that since we have assumed in the beginning that B is less than 0, if B is less than 0 then P becomes discontinuous at at T is equal to T C. So, now we need to consider the susceptibility before and above T C and if you do simple analysis at above T C A is greater than 0 okay, and A is equal to 1 over chi A. So, in this paramagnetic region it will remain the same as earlier it will be C divided by T minus you can say theta was it was taken as earlier but this will be C divided by T minus T naught. This is the paramagnetic susceptibility. So, if you look, look at the plot of susceptibility 1 over chi this is the so it this will go like this and it will go up to T naught this is T C where this T naught is little smaller than T C it is a and then above T C uh, sorry below T C we can work out what is del E del G by del P this is equal to E and this will be A P plus B P S P cube you can write P as P S below uh, T C, but um, that is something. So, 1 over chi B will be equal to del E by del P and this will be equal to A plus 3 B P square plus 5 C P 4 and so on and so forth. So, if you now just uh, so 1 over chi B will be equal to A plus 3 B we have already we already know the value of P square which is equal to minus of 3 by 4 B by C 
plus 5 into c. Uh, so, this becomes 5 into 3 c into a by c. You can also replace b in terms of a because remember this was the value of a, this was the value of p square. So, if you make the proper substitutions, you can get this in terms of 5 into 3 into c into a divided by c. So, this will turn out to be 4 a. Okay. So, in this region it will go as 4 a. So, that is what this susceptibility will be. So, in the first case you will have a slope of 4 and the second case you will have slope of 1. So, you just have to replace the value of a there. So, it will become something like this. All right. So, this is chi in temperature T less than T c and this is chi in temperatures greater than T c. So, this is what the variation of. So, in general if you just wanted to look at the phase transitions. So, ferroelectric phase transition. So, as I said that second order phase transition is uh, more common for materials like Rochel salt and K H 2 P O 4 etcetera. Whereas, first order phase transition is more common in materials like barium titanate etcetera, perovskite materials show generally first order phase transition. If you generally wanted to know about the phase transitions, the order of as I said the first order phase transition has a discontinuity in the first derivative of free energy. Second order phase transition will have a discontinuity in the second derivative of free energy, the first derivative remains continuous. So, if you plot this now in a general sense, so let us say we make a column of first order and then we make a column of second order and let us just make the plots of these quantities. So, let us say okay. So, in the first one we plot G versus T Okay. So, when you plot G versus T, so let us say you will have variation like this. So, this is the temperature T C at which the transformation is occurring. So, you can consider this being as if this is the free energy plot of height one phase let us say G alpha and this is the free energy plot of another phase which is G beta. So, um, so you will see um, that free energy plots intersect each other at some point. Sorry, uh, I have plotted in a little just one second. It should have been. So, this is the free energy plot of one phase and this is the free energy plot of another phase. So, the first phases plot continues in this region in this fashion. So, this is G alpha and the second phases plot will go in this region as which is G beta. Okay. Alpha beta could be considered as ferroelectric phase and paraelectric phase. So, you can see in this below T c alpha is stable and above T c beta is stable. right? So, this is G beta. So, this is first order phase transition. In the second order what you will see generally is that something like this. The free energy will be little bit sort of continuous along transition. So, let us say if this is the transition temperature T c the free energy will show sort of they will have common slope at this point. Whereas, in this case the slopes are different. right? Now, if you plot the entropy as a function of temperature, let us use a different color. So, let us say we plot entropy S versus T as a function of temperature. We will see that in this case entropy is nothing, nothing but del G by del T. So, in this case the entropy will show a discontinuity. right? So, this is delta S which is correspondent to latent heat. So, the slope will be given as C p specific heat and in this case we will see a sort of variation in the slope. So, something like that. So, you will have there will there will be no discontinuity, but the slope will change and the slope again will be C right the specific heat. In the now coming to the next one if you now plot the C at this transition it will be a massive divergence in specific heat at T c right. Whereas, in this case if you plot C versus T the 
C versus T will show a discontinuity like this. So, there will be a discontinuity But in this case, we will have uh, it nearly goes to infinity. So, there is a huge so sort of tending to reach infinity or very high values. So, this is what you see. So, in this case, in first order, you see a discontinuity in entropy or first derivative of free energy. So, this is del G by del T. I just use the diff S, which is del G by del T. This is minus of del 2 G by del T 2. This is so right. First derivative discontinuous in first order, second derivative discontinuous in second order. So, this is the whole summary of phase transitions of ferroelectrics. If you are really interested to know about ferroelectric phase transition, in fact, the Landau theory, I will recommend you to a very good paper. So, so this is the paper which is in journal advances in physics. So, this is uh, three. 10, so volume 3, issue 10, page 85 to 130, 1954 by A. F. Devonshire. Beautiful paper, this narrates the whole phase transitions in different kinds of phase transitions in ferroelectrics. So, we unfortunately cannot go into so many details because of limitation because of limitation of this uh, course, but I hope this has given you a brief idea about what kind of phase transitions that occur in these materials. Now, let us go into, into the next topic of uh, ferroelectrics having seen what kind of uh, uh, what kind of uh, phase transitions occur in ferroelectrics. Now, let us look at how do ferroelectric materials switch, what is the reason of hysteresis in the ferroelectric materials. So, as we saw earlier that, so here we will look at ferroelectric switching. So, ferroelectric switching basically is manifested in, as we saw earlier, you make a plot between charge and electric field or charge density versus electric field or polarization versus electric field and the plot is something like this. You can see sort of a something like this. So, this can this saturates at high fields. So, something like that. And uh, so, what happens in this ferroelectric is you as we saw earlier, you have a hysteresis, the such polarization at high fields is spontaneous polarization, polarization at 0 field is remanent polarization and the values of these spontaneous polarization and remanent polarization, they are equal and opposite to each other and then polarization becomes 0 at a field called as coarsive field which is depicted at plus and minus E c which are symmetric with respect to each other for an ideal system. Now, the question is why do these ferroelectric show ferro and this area under the curve by the way is nothing but the energy that is spent in switching. So, energy spent in switching will be P into E right energy per unit volume bus. So, this is nothing but mu E divided by volume. So, per unit volume. So, this energy is basically spent in switching. So, reason the question is why, why do we get this kind of behavior. So, in ferroelectric what happens is that, so this we can write area under the 
hysteresis curve. Now, what happens in these ferroelectrics is when you start from a virgin ferroelectric which has never been switched before, you start generally from origin. The polarization of a virgin ferroelectric is generally 0 polycrystalline ceramic and what happens is that initially when you start full switching the ferroelectric, it switches in sort of a linear fashion. So, up to point B, ferroelectrics are non-linear ceramics, right? but in the beginning from A to B, the polarization changes as a function of electric field in a linear fashion. So, this is A B. Now, when you go from B and that is when you start again, you start witnessing. So, in fact, I have drawn little bit incorrectly here or rather I have exaggerated this. This would be more like this and then so, this B would be somewhere here. So, initially it goes into linear, the polarization increase is not massive, but when you go from B to somewhere around C, B C, this is basically P versus E is nonlinear region. And this is where polarization increase much more rapidly than what a linear relation would suggest and massive increase in polarization happens. And once you once you reach point C, after that increases linearly. So, C to somewhere like you know D when it saturates, there is a linear increase again. And then when you decrease the field, so after you have saturated, you have no more increase in the polarization that takes place. So, basically at very high fields, all the dipoles are aligned, you have nothing else left to be aligned and you will have very little increase in the polarization if you just increase the electric field by basically polarizing it more in terms of. So, electronic and ionic polarization will contribute, but it will be very small amount of polarization. So, basically it tends to saturation. Once it saturates, now if you start decreasing the electric field, so this is what you went about. Now when you go back in this direction, what happens is polarization does not come back to 0, instead it stays as a value called as remnant polarization. What is the reason for this? Now the reason for this, why the polarization follows a behavior A, B, C, D and then why does it follow a path D, E instead of following D, C, B, A is something whose regions lie in formation of what we call as domains in the ferroelectric material. And as we will see in the next lecture, these domains are basically regions of regions of uniform or rather I can say regions of uh, single orientation of polarization. So, in these regions called as domains which could be of certain shape, all the dipoles are aligned in one direction. So, this is a domain, it is not a grain boundary, it should not confuse with the grain boundary, the grain boundary is about the grain orientation, the crystalline orientation, whereas in this case we are not talking about crystalline orientation, we are saying that polar vector in these regions is aligned in one direction. Okay. So, we will come back to microscopic mechanisms of the switching in the next lecture where we learn about domains, what domains are and how do domains, um, domain switching lead to what we see in reality. So, we will stop here, what we have discussed is about more details of phase transitions. We have finished the phase transitions, basically said that first order phase transition is because of manifested in sudden drop is polarization, sudden change in susceptibility. Uh, which is due to uh, first derivative of free energy being discontinuous at Tc, whereas second order phase transition is manifested in gradual drop of polarization around Tc, it goes to 0 at uh, Tc. Susceptibility also goes to 0 at uh, 1 over chi goes to 0 at Tc and uh, it is in this case the second derivative of free energy is discontinuous, but first derivative is continuous. So, we will stop here, uh, we will continue with the switching thing in the next lecture.